Hello guys, what's up? Today we are going to discuss an important topic uh, from the course of Riemann in geometry and a topic we have transformations. Uh, what actually transformation is uh, that how we use in this course is that how to transform a vector from one system to another system. We have basically uh, three systems uh, we often work with that is Cartesian system and uh, polar uh, system spherical system and cylindrical system and the problem <coughs> we have here is to we have to transform the vector written in Cartesian coordinates into plane polar coordinates uh, so how we will uh, approach this problem before we start we must know what a contravariant or covariant transformation law is because uh, without uh, uh, these two transformations law we are unable to transform this particular vector into a polar coordinate system uh, so uh, writing both of them first we have a contravariant transformation law that look like this and i called it a uh, step number one uh, that is how we choose our transformation law in contravariant uh, transformation law, uh, this particular index, uh, that is A, is written in a sub superscript, written above, and same like here with prime sign, and these two indices B, that are called dummy indices, will cause summation, uh, are written below, like this. Take it. Uh, you may use uh, different indices, but they must dummy must be same. Uh, however, the, the index appearing here must be similar to index appearing here. So in contravariant transformation law, that is contravariant transformation law of rank 1, only one index uh, uh, is using, we are using. So the particular alphabet must be written above and the dummy are like this. And in covariant transformation law, we have <coughs> This in contravariant alphabet is written above, but in covariant this alphabet is written below in subscript. And similarly, the dash with A here below and the dummy are now above. So the difference between these two uh, is uh, lies in the position of index A. In contravariant, the alphabet A is written above, and in covariant the alphabet A is written below. And similarly, the changes will apply here. So, how to use that these two transformation law depends upon our question. And in our question, uh, the vector we have uh, the uh, vector we have like x to power a, like a is written above here. So we have to use a contravariant transformation law for it. We are not going to use covariant transformation law because the because in the question we have a written above so we'll use a contravariant transformation law that is our step number one after choosing the particular transformation law that is contravariant transformation law we now move towards transformation basics we are dealing in cartesian coordinate system that is written in x comma y and we are going to transform it into a polar coordinate system that is r and theta so uh, we will named we will name both these systems in tensorial form uh, and here we are we wrote x1 comma x2 here x1 represents x and x2 represents y and we are going to transform this x1 into x1 prime that represents r and this x2 means y into x2 prime that is theta so we are going basically from Cartesian system into polar system and in tensorial form we represent these two systems like this. And this is our step number two. Step number three. So step number three is the formation of Jacobi transformation matrix. Uh, how to uh, wrote in a Jacobi transformation matrix? Uh, it lies here. We have transformation law for a contravariant and covariant transformations. We have both transformations and we are using contravariant transformation because in uh, our question, in our question, the vector here is written in the contravariant form. So according to contravariant transformation law, this alphabet A must be written above and, is a, and this A ha can have two values that is 1 and 2. Similarly, the dummy indices that cause similarly the dummy indices that cause summation B must have two values that is 
one and two uh, how we came to know that a and b uh, have must have two values that is one and two lies solution lies here it, because in our question uh, that is written Cartesian coordinates we are dealing with only two coordinates that is x and y so the values uh, for a and b are only one and two because of two uh, because of two variables here so as primes are appearing above so we will write Jacobi as below like x1 prime uh, derivative of x1 prime with respect to x1 similarly derivative of x1 prime with respect to x2 in the same way derivative of x2 prime with respect to x1 and similarly the x2 prime with respect to x2 so uh, uh, later on you will know that what actually it is uh, now, uh, for, uh, till now, we are calling it step number three. That is the formation of Jacobi transformation matrix. And the step number four, that is very important, uh, is the relationship between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. In Cartesian coordinates, we deal with x and y, and in polar coordinates, we deal with theta and r. So, uh, as in our question, we uh, we are going to transform a Cartesian into polar coordinates. So we must. So we have to write. Uh, we have to write the, trans the relationship between these two coordinate systems. And we know the relationship between Cartesian coordinate system and polar coordinate system is x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, and r equals square root of x square plus y square, where theta equal to tan inverse of y by x. So utilizing this we are going, going to take partial derivatives with respect to Jacobi transformation matrix. So uh, in the first row and first column we have x1 prime with respect to x1, partial derivative of x1 prime with respect to x1 and we already know that x1 prime represents r and x2 prime represents theta. So we are going to take derivative of x1 prime with respect to x1 means we are going to take derivative of r with respect to x so in these relations derivative of r with respect to x we have to use this equation because here r is depending on x and y so we have to take derivative of r with respect to x and after taking uh, and and solving it uh, we substitute it here similarly we will take derivative of x1 prime with respect to x2 and we know that x1 prime represents r and x2 represents y so we will take a derivative of r with respect to y so we will use a same relation here we will take derivative of r now but with respect to y in the same fashion we will substitute all these partial derivatives in Jacobi transformation matrix and the new form will become like this after taking all derivatives and substituting here in Jacobi transformation matrix, uh, we are uh, we will get this form, all this form. This is our Jacobi transformation matrix. And the step number six is the final step. We have to that is our transformation law, Cantor-Weil transformation law. You already know we choose Cantor-Weil transformation law written in the back page um, that is that looks like this so uh, and we already know that a ha can have two values that is 1 and 2 similarly b can have two values that is 1 and 2 and the, in, the, in the question uh, we have x a equal to x and y so we are going to transform this Cartesian into now polar coordinates now what we are going to do is we already know that a can have two values that is 1 and 2 so we will fix 1 here a a equal to 1 here and here and give, and give variation to b b can have two values that is 1 and 2 so we will fix a equal to 1 here that is 1 here and 1 here and give variation to b one uh, for once we have to put 1 here and the next time we have to put 2 here and we already know these values from Jacobi transformation law and fr from Jacobi transformation law uh, we put that value from Jacobi transformation law here and what actually x1 is x1 is in our question 
it x it is written x a put x a equal to one it means that x one is equal to the first entry that is x so for x one we will choose x similarly this entry comes from Jacobi transformation matrix that we already solved uh, and x two represents second entry that is y after solving all this we are getting we are going to get r here so our x1 is transformed into a polar coordinate system that is equal to r similarly doing for x2 now we'll fix 2 here and give variation to b in the similar fashion like we did here so fixing 2 here 2 here and we'll give variation to b we get this and after putting all the after putting all the values uh, from Jacobi transformation matrix, uh, we will get zero. So in the at the final end, we have x a prime equal to uh, x one prime and x two prime. That is equal to x1 equal to r and x2 equal to 0 so so here we are so we transformed our question written in cartesian coordinates into a polar coordinates that represents r and theta so do like and subscribe and sorry for my bad english as uh, i'm not a native speaker of english so apologies